Well, I want to talk about another pundit out there, another person who's everywhere and seems to uh, have gained in popularity, uh, David Icke. This is Dr. Thor Templar, and I'm going to give you the occult scientist view of these people out there that are popular, and there are many of them, and what does it all add up to? Well, first of all, let's remember that these people are just giving you information. There seems there's no way to prove this information, and this is always uh, the case with um, hidden information, things they don't want you to know about, things that are happening in Antarctica, the extraterrestrial question. Well, this has been the case since day one because of so many different corruption factors. As long as we have corruption, nothing will ever change, and corruption will never leave. And if we deal with that issue, then all sorts of things will happen. But you don't hear people like David Icke or anybody else talking about this. They don't seem to have the courage or their convictions when it really comes down to uh, doing things. That has, uh, they want to talk about things. They want to write these sensational books. And uh, it's very interesting information. And it's, um, it's like candy and pie. I mean, you know, you have a little bit of candy, you want more and more of it. But what does it do? Did it give you nutrition? Did it help you? Not really. It felt good for a little while. It was fascinating. Now it's done. So ultimately what comes from that is a, a negative effect of weight gain and having no nutrition. So it becomes actually toxic. And I think that all of these pundits out there, and David Icke is one of them, um, is doing the same thing. What are they actually trying to say here? Well, um, if you listen to David Icke uh, and what is his uh, particular um, lectures that he has, uh, he states that I have absolutely no idea how to change this, what can be done about it, period. Um, pretty much everything that he's stated is nothing unusual or new. This has been around for the last 50 to 60 years. The talks of reptilians, UFOs, he's not bringing up anything overly new. This is just research that he is digging up. He has an avenue, a, a soapbox to stand on. He has a medium he's built up. He's written a few books that were successful, that were published by a mainstream publisher initially, who then dropped him. Now he uh, self-publishes. Um, and this was a guy who comes from a non-educated background, whatever that means. I'm not sure that education helps, probably hinders. Um, he was basically unsuccessful, came from a poor family, and uh, was able to uh, get a mediocre position as a sports commentator or whatever, apparently. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, he did fairly good for himself coming from a economically depressed background because of some sporting abilities uh, that a lot of the only way the poor people can get out of things. But this isn't exactly someone who's been uh, involved in this or researching this from a childhood. He stumbled into it later. Um, you have to also wonder, since it worked, uh, that he would certainly uh, continue such uh, with the fact that um, this was a way to, uh, of getting income by writing the books and doing this research. And once you're successful in something like this, you really can't go back. And where is he going to go back? He looked for jobs and couldn't find them, per saying himself. And uh, he's almost forced into this position. So... What he is talking about is not new. As I've mentioned, this is stuff that's been going on for 40 to 50 years, if not longer. Uh, there's an awful lot of research that goes back 60, 70, 80 years into the 30s and 40s. Even There's a lot of activity in the 40s uh, with all the world wars and other things that came out and were suppressed and things that were invented before that. The contact with extraterrestrials, um, where uh, scientific discoveries were made, uh, which is linked to a lot of the German um, advanced weaponry, uh, which they stated to the Japanese came from Orion. Uh, so the point is we don't know uh, what the full story there is. But what I'm saying is there's nothing new. This goes back to the 20s and even before uh, certain development periods were done uh, that these things became more public or were used uh, based on some of these um, uh, advanced weapons. So as we move into these areas, what does it mean? So the whole idea of... Um, reptilians taking people's actual uh, being able to mask themselves, that they can go into the bodies of others, 
um, and uh, controlling rich people. Well, of course, what would you do as an advanced society? You wouldn't take over the newspaper vendor. You would go to the royal family, presidents, people of power. Well, of course you would if you had that ability. Now, this is not anything new. Not only is, does it go back uh, 50, 60 years, maybe further, uh, in common times, this goes back thousands of years. This is nothing more than advanced occult sciences where you can enter people's bodies, push out the other. This all comes from ancient practical occult sciences, as everything does, just like um, the science we have today, otherwise uh, which the world works on, quantum physics, is based on occult science Science, plain and simple. They've just changed the names to make it uh, that they act like they've discovered it now. Um, so the point is, is, you know, taking over people's bodies, um, inhabiting them, pushing out the other person's personality, or even pushing out their soul at times of death, and you taking over is nothing new. He's say, stating that it is. Now, it certainly is fascinating information. I think there's a place for it in the world. Uh, and I think people need some education, and he's the now new writer of it, of old material, because everything is basically rehashed. And of course, his stuff is no different than that. It's all rehashed. Um, as most people that come from, uh, that become popular, it appears he has a certain uh, God po complex as well. But you know, anytime you know a lot more than other people and you discovered things, you tend to think you're better than them. I mean, everybody does this. College professors think they know everything, and you're a peasant if you uh, conflict with them. Teachers in general do this, even idiot high school and junior high school teachers uh, who I had conflict with in my own life think they know everything and they know nothing. They're boobs. So, and then they have a God complex, most teachers in general do. It's all about them inflicting their power over others, because they sure as hell don't help very many people. Oh, they help the A students get A pluses? Some. Um, so as we move into these teachers and so forth, uh, he certainly brought up some interesting information. He talks about these things, which is just really putting in his more uh, common man level uh, understanding that he puts in a book. It's nothing new. He's not coming up with anything. He's not tapped into any great sources or anything. He thinks he is because information is coming to him. And uh, he is certainly on a higher plane of consciousness than the average person. But that's not saying much. So um, in terms of what he's doing, when you say you have no answers, it means you are not connected into anything. The one thing that I've done through my entire um, career in the occult sciences is I'm constantly producing practical information. And because I don't write about the old masters and go into the philosophical mumbo jumbo nonsense, well, you don't have the credibility that parapsychologists do that go to school and learn all the old garbage that is totally invalid today, completely and 100% invalid. Are all that old stuff. We have new stuff, new ways of looking at things, new technologies that totally invalidate these old uh, realities almost 100%. I mean, there's very little of it that has much value. Well, what has value is the ancient philosophers, uh, the Greeks who pondered the original questions. But even there, we have now a lot of... Um, uh, understanding that takes us past that and we need to get away from all that into the new realities. So um, what does he know? As I've stated in his, he's, he states in his lectures, he has absolutely no idea how to change any of this and really doesn't talk about things I'm sure he's well aware of as everyone is and that is the reason that things don't change is because of the fact that there is constant corruption on every level. Yet he will not talk about that. It's easy to attack the people at the top and nobody takes it seriously. Uh, politicians are always attacked. The royal family, well, who gives a shit about them anyway? Uh, attacking them is certainly not, uh, is even popular in a country that 50% don't want the royal family, maybe even more now. 
So, you know, when you go after people like that and you talk about secret societies and other things, and you don't point to the local police chief who's being bought off by the cartels. You don't talk about the military that is smuggling drugs and uh, refuses to win wars. Um, all the things involved in that, uh, you are missing the point. You're living in a world of cowardice uh, realities. I can't believe he's stupid that he doesn't understand this, but he is weak and refuses to deal with the realities of life. He's afraid to tackle the real issues and tell people how they can make change because then that is frightening to his opposition and to himself. So when you talk about uh, uh, reptilians invading people's bodies, which is not new and certainly any advanced society would be able to do this. Certainly these practices which uh, people think advanced societies have been done by occultists for years as I've already said. This is nothing new. So the point is is that these things will never get you in trouble. As a matter of fact, they'd love you to talk about these things because it gives you zero credibility because the average public is an idiot. Uh, and they're going to take information like that and laugh at it. So even goofball uh, alternative guy Jesse Ventura and one of his episodes of his TV show at the time approached um, uh, improperly and uh, attacked David Icke because of this, where can I go see reptilians, he said. I want to see them change. Well, it doesn't work that easy, Jesse. You know, where were the enemy in Vietnam that you couldn't get? Um you think they were standing in the line waiting for you to shoot them? So the whole idea is that uh, this is a ridiculous question. But even he went after him to, um, uh, to do these, uh, these things. So it's not nothing new, but in uh, Jesse Ventura's mind, that probably uh, is so far-fetched. Uh, he's too busy in his motorcycle gangs, apparently, they admitted being a member to uh, in recent interviews. Uh, but the point is, is David Icke refuses to deal with that. He's not telling you anything interesting. He likes to give long seminars of even seven, eight hours at a time. I don't know how he keeps anybody there. Uh, but the point is, is that uh, there's a lot of information there. And he can talk for hours and hours going into these long understandings of what's uh, going on and uh, the information he's called out of research, research that really is difficult and near impossible to validate, like almost everything in life. How can you validate anything? It ultimately goes down to somebody's uh, credibility. If someone says uh, in any industry that they did a poll and I found that 60% of the people like this, well, that's his opinion based on a poll that may or may not been bogus or real or skewed in his own direction. So there's it really is, you can't prove anything. Um, you certainly can't prove these other things. The amount of reports of extraterrestrial contact is enormous, especially in the 70s and 80s when people documented this of much more credibility than him. They even had products, SABs that cured cancer that they even had samples of. All of these things were out there, so what he is saying is nothing. And the point is, is what does that mean? He doesn't get into any details. He doesn't try and figure out the nature of reptilians so that something can be done to protect yourself from them or even exercise them from physical bodies. He doesn't even think this way. Why would he possibly do that? That would mean that he actually did something. I also, yet again, that these people tend to be part of the loyal opposition. You have to really wonder why they're successful and why they're out there. They serve a purpose, a purpose of being the loyal opposition. After all, if you own both sides of the fence, then you control everything. And when the public is stirring and wanting something different, well, you throw in somebody who fits the opposition and you control the opposition. So all you're doing is placating the people for the period of time um, that you need to then move in another person. This happened with Obama, etc. in America. Well, everybody was stirring at that time and wanted changes, so they moved in someone who did the same policy that they was in there anyway, under a different figurehead. 
Um, so it's the same old story. So you really have to wonder what's going on with this guy in general. Um, uh, is he part of the loyal opposition supported directly or indirectly? Well, I always question this because the world is 100% controlled. And the best way you can control things, as I just mentioned, is you control both sides. So you make sure you take weak, loud mouths that don't really have any answers and make sure that they're successful. And um, everything that goes with that equation. So we just don't know. Certainly, he's had his controversies, he's had problems, he is persecuted to agree, but he's not doing anything. He's been persecuted because of his um, claimed um, racial negativities towards uh, Jews and others um, that he's stated. Not the fact that he's stated that corruption is out there, we need to stop that, that we need to get control of police departments, military, etc. If the world's going to change, they is who run everything. Uh, they want to keep you into some secret society is running. What does that mean? It means absolutely nothing. So we um, need to fully understand that. Um, to understand what's going on, and he is not providing any answers. So after a basic low level on a scale of 1 to 10, his information's a 2, but who cares? What is the solutions? And he's not looking for it. He's not producing any evidence. He doesn't have pictures, tools. He doesn't have anything that will assist people, even basic practices, things you can do, ways to think, uh, new products to take, whatever it may be. This is something I've always stressed in my own career is what do we do in practical realities? We need things that work, things that we can empower ourselves with and Information is where you start, but basically it's one or two on the scale of 10. Until we get up to 10 and have workable changing technologies and have the masses working to change what's going on, nothing will change. And he doesn't talk about any of this, so it means that you have to really wonder. Certainly he is not connected at any high level, because if you, a person who has high level consciousness, you have answers. And he doesn't talk about that. He doesn't want to bore people. He doesn't want to tell people they have personal responsibility. That doesn't sell books. Uh, reptilians uh, be, uh, occupying the queen's consciousness certainly is uh, sells books. Telling people they need personal responsibility and to do things and to run an organization to facilitate this uh, is a, a thankless task with a population full of meat-headed fools that are happy to be slaves and are cowardice in nature. But, you know, we got to understand that every single movement in the history of this planet has happened because of a small percentage of people. It was thought that in the American Revolution that only two to three percent of the population supported the American Revolution. That's pretty shocking, people, but that's what the statistical figures come down to. Uh, plain and simple, and I would, I would think you're in the same situation now. People want their, uh, their pizza, porno, and beer, and nothing else has much care. And they'll do anything they necessary to take care of their own butt, and it doesn't really matter what happens to your neighbors, your friends, your community, ultimately. No one cares. And if you tell people this, they don't embrace it and see the folly of what they're doing. They are upset because they revolt against the fact of showing them for the weak cowards that they truly are.